Thousands of protesters gathered outside of Israel's parliament in Jerusalem for a third day, calling for early elections and a deal to release the hostages. Sunday will mark six months since the oh Hamas God. terrorist attack on Israel, and public demonstrations in the country have intensified in recent days. Israeli police say a protest last night outside of the uh, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's home turned into a riot. Hundreds tried to break through barriers near Netanyahu's home, but were blocked. Meanwhile, President Biden says he was outraged and heartbroken by an Israeli strike that killed seven World Central Kitchen aid workers in Gaza. In a statement, Biden wrote, this conflict has been one of the worst in recent memory in terms of how many aid workers have been killed. This is a major reason why distributing humanitarian aid in Gaza has been so difficult, because Israel has not done enough to protect aid workers trying to deliver desperately needed help to civilians. He added, incidents like yesterday simply should not happen. Israel has also not done enough to protect civilians. Strong words, the strike killed seven humanitarian workers on Monday, including a dual U.S. citizen. More than 200 aid workers have been killed in the war so far, according to the White House. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu posted on social media on Tuesday that Israel deeply regrets the tragic incident and that we will do everything in our power to ensure that such tragedies do not occur in the future. I got to tell you. I'm glad the president spoke out strongly, yeah. but this has got to stop. What really does? Uh, I, and 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 Richard, it's it's uh, it just uh, continues, and uh, there there's a very powerful uh, op-ed uh, dropped in the New York Times last night uh, by Chef Jose Andreas talking about how they had coordinated their movements with IDF. Uh, they had taken all precautions that that needed to be taken. And um, but let me just read you some of his words. They're very powerful, strong words. Um, he said, Israel is better than the way this war is being waged. It is better than blocking food and medicine to civilians. It is better than killing aid workers who had coordinated their movements with the Israeli Defense Forces. The Israeli government needs to open more land routes for food and medicine today. It needs to stop killing civilians and aid workers today. It needs to start the long journey to peace today. Richard, um, Israel and the supporters of Israel, uh, which I am, uh, have been, always will be, uh, will be, would be fooling themselves if they don't think that the overwhelming number of Americans agree with Jose Andreas that this is just enough. And they need to focus on on a permanent ceasefire. They need to focus on um, need to focus on getting the hostages home, uh, and they need to focus on creating a world uh, moving forward without Hamas. And of course, in Israel, it will be without Benjamin Netanyahu. And maybe, just maybe, then we can take the first step of a thousand steps toward a two-state solution. Look, Joe, exactly right. There, there's so many fault lines which have emerged in the last 24 hours. Let's begin with the, 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 the World Central uh, Kitchen uh, incident. Look, this, is, this didn't come out of the blue. As, as you heard from the White House, you've had roughly 200 aid workers have been killed, also 20,000 civilians in Gaza. Put aside the Hamas fighters. Let's say approximately 20,000 civilians have been killed. What this says to me is that Israel's approach to the war simply doesn't place enough emphasis on avoiding either aid workers or civilians. And then you obviously have a question of competence here. Why is it that an identified vehicle that had been, whose movements had been coordinated was still targeted? What's going on here? Could you have that degree of uh, incompetence? So either it's cavalier or it's incompetent. Neither one is reassuring. You know, and for the first time, the Israeli government reacted. They understand. They understood what a PR disaster the, the, this was and is. But that doesn't change the basics. This was not an exception. This was just high profile. I, I, Richard, I, can I can I can I stop you there? Because that is such a good point. It's not an exception. 
It shows that there has been, as Joe Biden has been worried about and warning about, indiscriminate bombing. These are the stories we know about. We know uh, about these seven aid workers, but we haven't talked about, because it hasn't made the front pages, the other aid workers that have died because of this bombing, in, uh, indiscriminate bombing in, 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 in this very tight, condensed area. It's just like the hostages that broke free from their captors, shirtless, arms in the air, doing everything they're supposed to do, and they get shot by the IDF. How many times do you think that's happened when it's not been? Israeli hostages. Sorry to speak the truth. It's just the truth. How many times? I mean, you know, I, 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 crazy me. I'm actually worried about the, the future of Israel. I'm actually yeah. worried about Americans loving Israel That's as much as I line. love Israel. I'm worried about what Benjamin Netanyahu with this offensive uh, is doing. And, and we're seeing it. We're seeing it. The more the protests rise, against Benjamin Netanyahu, and the more pressure he feels, the more uh, uh, petrol, so to speak, he throws on the flames. It's just going to happen because he knows he can't leave power. He gets sent to jail. So, so he interested. will he will intensify this war. He will hurt Israel's standing in the world even more. He will get us even further away from getting the hostages home, all because he's got to make himself seem like the indispensable man by creating even, even higher stakes in this war. Yeah, look, whatever the motives, the, the prospects or the odds, of a wider, longer war went up in the last 24 hours. You, know, you had, in addition to this question of what Israel does in Gaza and how it waits going after Hamas versus getting the hostages back, and you began with the protests in, in Israel about that, the attack on the Iranian compound in, in Syria. You know, we can argue that separately, the wisdom of that, and I think there was some case for doing it, but it does increase the odds that now this war will grow wider, I think the chances of something with Hezbollah in the north in Lebanon and Israel go up. So what we're seeing, Joe, quite honestly, and it's tragic, is none of the preconditions and none of the prerequisites of a calming either in the Gaza front uh, or, or, or more broadly with Lebanon, with, with Iran in the Red Sea. The, the Middle East is like an earthquake zone with multiple fault lines, and at the moment, several of them are going off at once and they re reinforce uh, one another. So you know, you know, every once in a while you hope that out of bad news there could be a glimmer of good news. I don't see it this morning, I'm sorry to say. So John, this has obviously drawn widespread condemnation from the Middle East, from the West, the UK, the United States, we've seen it everywhere. Those vehicles couldn't be marked more clearly. We're looking at them in this video. Those were aid workers. You have other aid organizations now pausing their efforts saying, we don't know that it's safe for our aid workers to go into Gaza given what happened with World Central Kitchen. So what is the spot now that President Biden has been in for a long time, but that was made much worse by what happened? We can talk about domestic politics. We saw a little bit in some of those primaries last night. But on the international stage, what is the spot he's in right now? Yeah, to your point, those vehicles couldn't have been better marked. In fact, it looks like from the footage of the destroyed van, one of the missiles went right through the logo of the World Central yeah. Kitchen, right there, right through the logo, and just killed everyone uh, inside. Uh, and it should be noted, to Richard's point earlier, you know, this mistake hit uh, comes a day after the precision strike that killed the Iranian general uh, in, in Syria. It's hard to reconcile uh, those two things. Yes, there's real political pressure. We'll get into it a little later. But there was, again, a substantial uncommitted vote last night in Wisconsin. That's a protest vote about Gaza. You know, it's the primaries. It's, there's a belief that a lot of those voters will eventually come home to President Biden. They're not all going to. There's some real anger there, uh, and that's not going to dissipate. Um, and, and, and now, at least, we have a moment where you know, the president, and, and this has been bubbling up from behind the scenes for a while, President Biden, frankly, is furious at Prime Minister Netanyahu. But yet, still, his administration has not conditioned sales, weapons sales, conditioned aid. They haven't done it yet. Now, maybe this is the moment that comes. This also happens just, we think, a week or two, perhaps, before this Rafa offensive, which really could be a flashpoint. Okay, I'm so sick of hearing how upset President Biden is. The buck stops with him. If he wants to stop arm sales, if he wants to stop the bombs that are indiscriminately killing civilians, he can. He has the power. We don't need him going and his aides going to reporters and talking all background about how upset they are. 
what happened yesterday is still going to happen. When, at Mika's conference, the, uh, the head of the Palestinian Red Crescent spoke, and she was incredibly moving. This was in Abu Dhabi. And she spoke about the difficulty of aid getting in the country period from the north or south and she described a process that was kind of like the tsa changing the rules every single day going through airport security until those checkpoints are working and aid is going through we don't need to be giving any more arms sales or money it needs to stop it needs to be conditional it's ridiculous that it's going on unchecked and unfettered, and we're sitting around and talking how upset we are while we hemorrhage billions of dollars. It's the worst of all worlds right now for the president. Uh, the, the criticism looks increasingly empty. It's six months. We're reaching the six-month milestone of, of, this, uh, of, of this war. That, that, that's, you know, that's one fact to begin with. And two things have happened in the last few days. One is these attacks are continuing. And yet, so are U.S. arms transfers to Israel without conditions. They've been going on for six months. Where, why does Israel need 2,000-pound bombs to be used in high-density populated areas? Then, 10 days ago, what does Israel do? It expropriates 2,000 acres of land in the West Bank for settlement construction. Where is the White House reaction to that. That is how you undo even the possibility, Joe was talking about it, of one day getting to a two-state solution. If you're going to have a Palestinian state, the last I checked, states are built on territory. If the territory isn't there to build it on, you can talk about two states till the cows come home. You don't have it. Where's the administration reaction to that? So at some point, the words become empty. And the Biden administration is very close to having reached a point where their criticism of Israel is too much for the same people who criticize Chuck Schumer. But it's not nearly enough to affect the course of what is going on. That is the worst of all well, possible weak. It looks weak and impotent. You were in the HW administration at the State Department. At the White House. At the White House. What would James Baker have done? <laughs> and seriously, that's what we should be asking ourselves, because that was a moment when we were a diplomatic superpower. Well, so we, we confronted Israel. And if you remember at the time, Israel was subsidizing people leaving the Soviet Union. And they were going into the occupied territories. We basically said to Israel, you have a, you know, you, we'll help these people to get out of the Soviet Union, but we're not going to subsidize their going into the West Bank. That forecloses options down the road. We understand you may not have a Palestinian partner today, but we want to work, we want to preserve the option for the day when we might be. And the administration basically said to the Israelis, you have a choice. They made their choices that had economic consequences. This administration has got to have some teeth in it. So hey, everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.